Okay, next few episodes I'm going to be doing will show some of the updates with the new Premiere CC 2014. Uh, one nice thing that they've added um, is going to be the uh, mask tracking options that they've kind of imported from After Effects right into Premiere for quick uh, covering up of objects. And you can do this in many different ways, which is kind of cool. Uh, first of all, there's the, the blurred out faces option. If you want to blur out a face with uh, something like mosaics, uh, it's really easy to do. You can do it with a blur effect, you can do it with mosaics, you can do it with a shape. Um, and if you find one of those things under effects, the three that, that are probably the most used, and there's several others that will work with this tracking, you'll see those tracking options under the effects here. Um, will be, uh, first of all, let's t I'm just going to type in mosaics in the effects here. And you'll see the mosaic tab right there. I'm going to drag and drop that to this clip. <clears throat> and you'll notice the first thing it does is it makes uh, mosaics out of the entire clip. So right now, if you select the clip, go up to effects controls, you'll see the effect has been added to the effects effect controls of this clip. There's the mosaics right there. And you can tell it, <clears throat> um, first of all, you can tell how many blocks you want to use. Right now, it's just 10 horizontal blocks, 10 vertical blocks. Somewhere around 100 works a lot better. Uh, to kind of do the mosaics over the face. Now you'll notice it's done mosaics. It's, it's made 100 by 100 uh, vertical and uh, horizontal blocks there, which works out a little bit better. Now I'm going to uh, go to this mask option. This is the option right here that you will see added in Premiere CC uh, 2014. Are these two options right here, or, or these options to add a mask here. Um, create an ellipse mask or a four point polygon mask. Um, there's some other advanced mask options that are in Premiere that also do motion tracking as well, but we're just sticking with the basics here. Uh, I'm going to create an ellipse mask here. Click on the Mosaics tab and it brings open this uh, little shape here. Now all you have to do is simply grab these nodes and drag them. If you move over it, it turns into a hand which repositions the mask. Otherwise, if you go to these corners, you can grab these nodes and drag them in and create the shape that you want to. Say you want to cover a face. You just simply do that and cover the face. Now, uh, once we've got the shape in place here, we move it exactly where we want it. If you grab your uh, playhead and move through it, you'll notice as she moves out of the shot that it loses track of her face there. So what you can do, I'm just going to go to the very beginning. This is nice if you want to blur out somebody's face in a crowd. Um, or or just, uh, you can even do it with a shape layer and put uh, like those little blocks over people's eyes. We'll show you that instance here. But what you do is you get it to your very first frame of your video, or you can track backwards and forwards with these options right here in your mask path. Um, they have some different tracking methods under this wrench here. If you click on that, you can tell it to, road, to track by position, scale and rotation, position, rotation, or just position. In this instance over here, position is going to work just fine. Uh, position and rotation, if the object happens to rotate and you want it to follow it, you can do position and rotation. If it changes size, you can do position, scale, and rotation. Rotation. Uh, if a person is coming closer to the camera, it will change scale. Otherwise, uh, position sometimes is the way to go if it's just simplified. In this instance, uh, you, can usually just, you can usually leave it on position, scale, and rotation, and it does pretty good. Now you push this button here. If you do the difference between these two items right here is track forward. It'll keep tracking frame by frame by frame automatically, and this will just do one single frame at a time. Um, if you lose track of the mask, you'll notice these keyframes. Uh, I've got another lesson that's coming up on keyframing. If you watch that um, that episode, it'll explain keyframing a little bit more in detail. Uh, but this is going to add keyframes, and you can alter those keyframes later on if you wish. I'm going to hit play forward, and it's going to track this mask forward. You'll notice it's pro progressing here, and as she stands up, you're going to notice that the mask tracks with her, with her face. It's going to lock to those pixels. There it goes. She's dipping down, and as she stands up, you'll notice the mask tracks with her face. And there it goes. Okay, I'm going to let this track come back and continue. Okay, once this is done here, um, we grab the mouse and we move back and forth here, and you'll notice the mosaics tracks with her face, it's locked with her face. Now, if somebody happens to walk in front of her, you can actually, it'll, you'll notice there'll be some keyframes that it loses in between where the person walks in front of somebody else. You can just simply move the mouse to the point where the tracking needs to pick up, remove the, uh, take the mask and put it back where it goes, and it will uh, pick up the tracking from there on. Uh, so it's pretty cool the way they've uh, 
created this mask. Now, now you'll notice also there's other items you can do here. I'm going to turn off my mosaics here so her face comes back. You can also do it with a blur. Now whenever you grab a Gaussian blur or any other type of blur and drag it on, you'll notice it has these same shapes. You can actually This mask has been added to several of their um, uh, video effects down here where you can just add the mask and the mask effect to a certain portion of the screen. So same thing, we can make this the size and shape of her face here and we can decide to do the Gaussian blur. Right here we can go to Mask Feather, or and actually this is another thing they've added is Mask Feather in the new updates. I'm going to go over here and we're going to change the blurriness. I'm going to drag this up and you'll notice it blurs out the face. Uh, you can feather the edges. Like I said, this is new to CC for, uh, 2014. You can add a feathered edge instead of a hard edge now, which is nice. And the face has been blurred out, but I'm going to go to the very beginning. I should have been the be the beginning clip here, or the be beginning of the clip. I'm going to hit that mask, drag it down over the face, make it a little smaller, and now I'm going to track forward. And you'll notice here it is creating all those keyframes. You can land on any of the, land on any of those keyframes and change where that mask is. If it happens to lose track a little bit, you can reposition those on any individual keyframes, and it will remember that on the keyframe. Uh, so that's kind of a cool thing you can do with a uh, with a ma with the new mask path that they've added, uh, the tracking that they've added to this. You'll notice it's tracking with her face there and the mask will lock to her face. Stop that, and I didn't let it finish, but I can get to that point and let it finish and hit the play button and it will track through the rest, but you can see that that mask is following her face there. Uh, say you want to do uh, something covering this person's eyes here. Like you've seen those um, things, those, those movie clips or those video clips when they put the bar over somebody's eyes, supposedly trying to hide their identity just because it covers their eyes. If you want to do that, so if we want to do that, we can just type in solid, and there's a solid composite. We can drag and drop that to the clip, and there you go. There are the uh, the shapes here. We can do a four-point polygon mask here. Uh, we can move this over the eyes. We are going to go down to this little zoom here. So I'm going to pull this down, and we're going to zoom up a little bit closer. I'll pull it down so I can see the eyes. Select the mask so I see the shape. Um, now I'm going to grab the edge here, and we're going to make this a little bar that goes across the eyes. Pull these shapes down. Okay, right now there's the mask shape. Down here you'll notice the, uh, the source opacity is 100%. You'll want to put the source opacity at zero, so it goes solid. You notice the edges are feathered. If you want to make it look hard-edged like they usually are with those little uh, blocks they put over the eyes, you put zero on the feather. And I'm going to change this to black, like you kind of see in those little movies, to get get rid of the eyes here. But actually, I need to go to the beginning of my frame here, beginning of the clip. I'm going to grab that and move it over her eyes. And now I'm just going to track forward. But one thing with this, if, you, um, if her head moves a little bit, you'll see this thing starting to rotate and change shape. This is one instance when it's better just to put it on position so you don't see this thing rotating as she stands up. It just stays straight across, so I just put that on position. Press play, and that will track to her eyes, and you'll have that black uh, bar over the eyes the whole time, and it will track with it. I'll come back and show the results of this here when it's done. Okay, I stopped this before it finished, but I'm going to fit this back to the window here, so I see the whole thing. There are the bars. And let's take a look. Let's play through it. She stands up, and the bars stay on her eyes the whole time. There you go. And it tracks pretty well. Um, I just didn't finish to create the rest of the keyframes there. So you can see, you'll see that this mask is on several different of the video effects. It does the motion tracking. You can go in and, and alter these keyframes if you wish. You can stretch things out like you can with regular keyframing so it lasts over a longer period. Uh, if you want to understand keyframing a little bit more, look at my keyframing episode. And, uh, and you'll understand that as well. But uh, between, between understanding keyframing and these mask paths, uh, it has turned out to be a pretty powerful tool that they've added to uh, the new CC 2014. So uh, I've got some more episodes showing the 2014 updates. Watch those as well. Thank you.